So if I were to ask you what muscle power goes to the terminal tendon insertion, what would you say? The terminal tendon insertion is the only structure that can fully extend the DIP joint. The supporting structures of the DIP joints, the collateral ligaments, the fibers within the capsule, and the oblique retinacular ligament, the passive tension in all of these structures contributes to DIP joint extension from the position of full flexion to about minus 45. But from that position of minus 45 to full extension, it must be the terminal tendon insertion tension that's creating that motion. The terminal tendon insertion has even less excursion than the proximal central slip insertion. Again, illustrated here by a small width of tape in relationship to the actual size of my finger. This small amount of excursion means that the length tension ratio of the dorsal apparatus is very critical to normal balance of motion in the finger. Remember, only DIP and PIP joint motion affects tension or movement at the terminal tendon insertion. Metacarpal phalangeal joint motion, which is more proximal, does not create any tension or excursion at the terminal tendon insertion. Any length change, therefore, of this system will adversely affect finger kinematics. That means that an inadequately treated mallet finger does not just affect change of motion at the DIP joint, but it changes the entire balance throughout the finger. 